What's up everyone, Chuck here with VNP and today we've got our beautiful Track Attack 500 back on the dyno. In our previous video, we swapped over the pulley, we made a little bit more boost, and unfortunately we had IATs that were just unacceptable and it was robbing us of some precious horsepower. So we worked with our friends over at PWR and we developed this beautiful 81 millimeter race core. It is an upgraded intercooler system for the Predator Supercharger and keeps those IATs much cooler, allowing us to get a lot more horsepower out of this thing. We're gonna get this swapped into the car. We're gonna get another dyno pool and see where it puts us. So uh, let's get the tools and uh, swap this thing over, see where we end up. So as you can see on the underside of the lid of the supercharger, we actually have this rib that runs down through the middle. Most people will probably never see this, but if you're doing this intercooler swap, you're gonna notice it. This actually has two purposes. The first purpose is to split the air as it comes through the intercooler core to either side of the intake ports. And the second purpose is to provide some structural rigidity to the top of this lid. Don't drop them down the intake ports. All right, so we've got the stock core out and we've got it sitting next to our new 81 millimeter race core. Um, as you can see right off the bat, there's quite a bit more capacity in the race core. That means that we're gonna have more fluid capacity, which means we're gonna have better cooling, better IATs, and ultimately more horsepower. As you can see, we did keep the factory connection lines. That way you don't have to do any additional modifications when you're installing this. All in all, this entire swap should take you about an hour in your driveway with hand tools. And the net increase that you're gonna see on this, especially with a car that's been turned up a little bit, is gonna be well worth your time and money. So let's get this new core in and we'll get Joe out here. We'll fire it up and see what kind of power we can make and see where those IETs are at now. All right, so we just got the car bolted back together. We've got uh, fuel pressure, no injector leaks. We've got intercooler pump flow, so we're ready to go. Unfortunately, Florida's not doing us any favors today. Extremely hot and humid, as you can tell by my profuse sweating. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go grab Joe. We're gonna get this thing fired up, see what kind of power we can make. All right, so we got Joe, we got the computer in hand, and we're sitting here in track attack. Uh, we actually have the last run pulled up when the car made 1019. And we're going to compare condition versus condition on when that pull was made versus the conditions of today. And we're going to try to accurately repeat those same conditions as close as possible. Unfortunately, I think our air temps on the last pull ambient was 84 degrees. Ambient was 70. The downstream air temps before we started the pull were 84. So ambient was 70. Mm -hmm. Today's ambient is 90... 99. 99. Yep. <laughs> the downstreams were 84. 84 before the pull. Okay, so 84 before the pull and an ending... Ending IAT. The highest they got during the course of the pull, 192. So 192. So starting yep. at 84, ending at 192. Yep. So we have a delta of sorts there to go off of, mm -hmm. just because we're not going to have exactly repeatable um, ambient air temps because Florida summers are what they are. Yep. But uh, we'll try to get the downstreams as cool as possible, given the conditions of the day, and then we'll have uh, just the, the difference between the two numbers to compare. Mm -hmm. um, that should give us a relatively good idea of how our intercooler core is performing. And then of course we'll have the horsepower number to go off as well. Exactly. And we'll also try to mirror the engine coolant temp. I'll, I'll target 84 degrees, as low as I can get, because I don't think we're going to get 84 degree IAT right. at 99 ambient. Not without That'd ice. That'd be a super efficient intercooler <laughs> yes. core. Um, and then I'll just wait for engine cool temp to get 172. We'll make our pull, see what see what the data looks like, and go from there. Cool. So uh, we're gonna get this thing fired up. Joe's gonna get the temps uh, where we need them. Uh, we mm -hmm. are running uh, E1R in the car just for safety reasons. This is still a stock motor, um, so we're just trying to keep things as uh, safe as possible when doing these kinds of things. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's fire old E track attack up and mm -hmm. track attack. see what kind of steam she makes. So we just finished up with our first pull mm -hmm. and torque was up, uh, which we think is probably credited to a little bit of tire slip on the dyno from the original pull of the 1019. Mm -hmm. uh, the torque was up. Um, we did make less power, but we're looking through the data now and we have a few reasons as to why. So the car actually saw two degrees less timing mm -hmm. than the 1019 pull and yeah. it also saw about two PSI less boost. Yeah. Now, typically two degrees down and two PSI less, you'd expect a pretty significant drop off. Uh, the car actually made 984, mm -hmm. 812, 
So we can have Brian shove up the other graph of the 1019 764 just so you can kind of see the overlay. But all in all, being two degrees down and two PSI down, that's not that much of a power difference. Not exactly. what I would expect. Exactly. So we're going to make a few adjustments. We're going to run it again and see if we can't uh, can't get the degrees added back in there and figure out what's up with the boost level. But the good news is the measurable data that we were looking for is IATs. Mm -hmm. And we actually got the data that we expected from that. Yeah, so the IAT at the beginning of the run was 106, like I called out. I don't know if they're going to show that part of the video or not. But 106 was the IAT when I started the poll. The IAT at the end of the poll, we confirmed, 172. So 66 degrees delta through the course of the poll. Um, and previously, pull up that other one. Previously, before the poll, we were 84. At the end of the poll, we were 192, 194. Um, That's so 112 had, degree difference. Yep. Versus about 66, 66 degrees difference. Yeah. So. So we've pulled heat out of it with this new intercooler pool. Right. So we've we've got significantly better IATs. Mm -hmm. um, because we are spinning this blower so much harder than what it would have been spun from the factory, yeah. these IATs are going to be higher than what you would expect with a stock Predator motor. Mm -hmm. But no one's really leaving these things stock, so... Yeah, I mean, this is, at the end of the day, 22 pounds of boost. Last time it saw, at the marker on that, 23.7, it shows a peak on the graph here at 24. Um, so we're, like you said, we're down two pounds of boost. Don't know if that's because of air temp or air density, or if it's a little bit of belt slip. Um, but we're down physically down two pounds of boost. We're 984 horsepower, 812 torque. Um, previous 1019, 764. We suspect some of the mid-range torque was because of wheel spin. So all in all, maybe not exactly the horsepower number we wanted, but we had we have the reasons why. Mm -hmm. uh, the good news is the the data we were after with the intercooler core and the intake air temps, proving that the core we have designed here works and does what exactly. exactly what it's supposed to do. Exactly. So we'll let the car cool down a little bit and uh, Joe's going to make a couple of revisions and um, make another pull and see if we can get to a little bit uh, a little bit higher horsepower number. So yep. let's get to work. Alright, so the two degrees brought back some of our power. Yep. Um, that one was 1,009,810. So we kept the torque again. So Yeah, so the tires are hooking up in the bottom this time. Yep, yeah, but still down, still down 2 PSI. So that pull was a 1,008 wheel. Mm -hmm. 1,008 wheel was gone. And 810 torque, I believe. Mm -hmm. Adding the additional timing back in went ahead and brought us back up into the four-digit range. Mm -hmm. um, this is STD Smoothing 5. Mm -hmm. um, so 1,008 wheel, 810 torque. Uh, 20, 22, 22 PSI. Yep, 22 PSI. And 22 degrees of time. Yeah. So now we need to check where our intake air tanks were at with that run. Uh, I believe we actually started that pull at about 111 downstream. It was 115 downstream. 115 downstream, so already so pretty warm. <laughs> so basically, 175 to 180, somewhere right in that range, by yeah. the end of the pool. Yep. So starting at 114 and in 175 roughly. Basically the same delta of around 60, 70 degree. Right, that we'd seen from the first pull. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I would say that we can consistently see that the race core is outperforming the stock core by about 50% efficiency. Mm -hmm. So stock core, we were seeing deltas of about 100 to 100, in, I'm sorry, 100 to 110 degrees mm -hmm. from 2000 RPM to redline. Mm -hmm. And uh, in hotter air, we are seeing about a 70 degree, mm -hmm. 60 to 70 degree difference in air temps from 2000 to redline. Yeah. Um, so pretty significant difference in intake air temps uh, just from intercooler swap alone. And this is still using the same tune file, the same uh, intercooler pump, the same coolant. I mean, this is, there's no other changes being made other there's than no just other the core. external variables here. Right. It's all, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> trying to give a quantifiable, verifiable result on what the core swap alone does on a car that's making 24, 22 pound Yeah, I, and I'm pretty sure that if we had better uh, 
ambient air temps today that the power number would also be you know more favorable to what we would like to see mm -hmm. but you know ultimately that's out of our control yeah i mean we're talking about ambient conditions we're not in a climate controlled environment right the climate's controlling the environment right now <laughs> so all in all uh you know I, I would say that based off the things we can control which would be the intercooler um really impressive results from the 81 millimeter uh we've taken the intake air temps from being something that we both sat here and said last time we filmed this or something that we didn't feel comfortable continually running the car at yeah. two intake air temps that i would say are much more manageable yeah especially considering our starting time right. if we were an 84 degree starting temp we'd be in the 150s 160s which is where we would like to see yeah exactly so yep the uh the 81 millimeter race core is actually available now it's on the vmp website there's a link down below go ahead and click it check it out if you've got a predator engine swap or a 2020 gt500 you want to get this intercooler core for your car give us a shot here at sales and uh, we'll take care of you and we can also tune these things we've got a load of other parts available for these cars now make sure you like share and subscribe we'll see you guys again next time thanks